Good morning, my friends. Got a pretty serious weather change today out in the garden. Much cooler, overcast skies. Perfect weather for gardening, really. Fall is one of my favorite times to be out in the garden. It's time for a reset. Start getting things cleaned up from the summer months. Get a few fall crops in the ground. You still get garlic in right now. Is best time to put in garlic. And I thought I'd pick up the camera, just bring you guys along, share with you what I'm up to this morning. And also share with you a tip, something I like to do. You know, as you start to get to these stages in your garden where you've got many, many square feet, sometimes uh, these tasks can become a bit daunting. So what I like to do is reduce and choose little certain areas of the garden to work in. Today, what I'm looking at is the hugel culture. Still got a lot of productivity here, but some of these summer crops like the mugwort here should be cut back, either harvested, chopped and dropped. Uh, we've got some of these rattlesnake beans dangling there. I need to harvest the seeds. We might have some rain actually coming into the area soon. So anything that's a dry seed, I need to get out of the garden now. And then just basic maintenance. Go through the pathways here with a rake, clean things up pull some some harvest like these little red cherry tomatoes here which are perfectly delicious need to make sure I'm harvesting all that I can so I'm going to start off over in this area and harvest all these dried beans we've got a lot of these rattlesnake beans aren't they beautiful that purple and green loaded with nutrients well, we got a lot of these dried pods dangling here and I did that intentionally I left the later harvest to hang so that we can get some more seed I really love these rattlesnake beans so I'm gonna start over here get this area of the trellis cleaned up and as long as I'm over here check out the ceanothus well hello ladies did you come to see what I'm up to Ceanothus is really exploding with new growth right now. This is one of my favorite evergreen shrubs that is an nitrogen fixer and also produces beautiful flowers that bring in loads of bees to your garden. Look into Ceanothus. Very cold tolerant as well. Versatile plant. You can grow it a lot of places. Over here at the end of this hugel mound, you see the comfrey here. Medicinal herb. Wonderful chop and drop plant. You can make all kinds of liquid fertilizer with it. And we've got some parsley. This parsley grew throughout the summer without ever bolting. And the main reason for the success of this particular plant is because of the crowding of the rest of the plants around here. We've got some basil. I've just let these flower spikes take off. I'm not trying to prune for production anymore. Just like the beauty of it. Over here we've got some sweet potato greens, also known as camote tops. In Tagalog, my wife is Filipino and she turned me on to eating the greens of the sweet potatoes. They're absolutely delicious. And this was a purple sweet potato I actually bought from the store. Just put a couple spuds there in the soil. Some more comfrey. I've been working on building up the sides of these hugel mounds with some of the wood that I took out of the property. Lots and lots of purple tree collards. And if you look closely, these plants keep popping up. And every year when I do my reset, I kind of bend these wiry stems, these trunks of the plants over and make it part of the mound, almost like as if it was the skeleton of the hugel culture, keeping it all together. And then these new shoots emerge and it's just become denser and thicker. And now each one of these spikes here, I can take a cutting and produce many a purple tree collar plants. I'm actually going to be doing that very soon. Longevity spinach, looking quite healthy. I've got a few on this mound over here. I didn't have much success with my cucumbers this year. Uh, just didn't water enough. Didn't get out here. Don't have any automatic watering set up in the garden. And the cucumbers didn't take off. My Arminian cucumbers, which I usually have a lot of success with, just kind of puttered out as well. Here's some of the vines. It started to produce 
cucumber and then it just decided no not this year that's how it goes sometimes so we got a lot of cleanup to do up here on the trellis pull out some of these dead leaves and the main reason this doesn't look better is because again my lack of watering which I'm okay with because we're still getting production with very little input and we have already harvested several of these calabash gourds for eating once they get larger like this and they start to become hard then there's other uses you can allow these to dry out and turn them into birdhouses and such the pathway here in the hugel culture I've just been throwing all the different wild amaranth and weeds that have been growing around here I've just been throwing it in the pathway I'm gonna cover it up with some cardboard and then probably some either wood chips or chop and drop The weeds that remain on the property are 90% friendly weeds is what I'll call them. They have other uses, they're edible. That's a good thing. When I first got started on this project, they were 90% the wrong type of weeds. Things like bindweed, Bermuda grass. So it's much easier to maintain now. Some kabocha squash. Another one up there. Here's some younger calabash gourds. So actually this is a vine. It's crawling <laughs> over from this side here and coming up over here. And there's several. New little calabash. We'll be eating those. It's, it's like free food, guys. Once you get these systems in place, it's... Gardening is one of the all-time best investments you can make in your life. It's not just going to save you money from going to the store. It saves you time from going to the store. It improves your health. It offers you a higher level of food security and also opens the door to a lot more different foods that you may not otherwise have access to because you can grow unique things. And when you're picking, you're getting the fresh and the best foods you can get hopefully you're growing organic you know where it came from you're tending to the soil adding in nutrients minerals that sort of thing and the foods that you produce are going to really pay you back in a big way so Already here in about two minutes. I've harvested enough seed here to have a nice crop for next year. And there's plenty more seed, so everything now is just abundance that I can share, I can save, hold on to, put a date, and what these seeds are right there on the label. Let's open up one of these pods. They're not super crispy yet. Good looking seed. And you'll see here, this is what backyard chickens will do when you're a gardener. And it's what makes them an asset, a great garden buddy. They'll literally follow you around. And when they see you starting to disturb an area, they'll go check it out and basically go on bug detail, see what you've stirred up. And that's what she's doing now which is fine because we're resetting this bed. And in many cases, folks will actually put a little uh, chicken screen around a certain area or garden bed and keep the chickens in that exact spot for some time and have them till through and work through the bed. My chickens just are free to roam. So I'm gonna set up this camera while I go get Another tool here.
So I'm going to start pruning back some of this mugwort here. A lot of folks aren't familiar with mugwort, and there is some misconceptions too. I get a lot of comments, people telling me just how invasive this plant is. I've never had an issue. So I don't know, maybe in some climates it might become an issue, but I've got a couple different patches of mugwort, and it dies back in the winter, and it comes back from the root zone with maybe just a small amount of spreading. It's perfect, actually. And every year my patch can grow a little bit if I take care of it. Or it can disappear altogether. I've had that happen as well. This mugwort actually has some edible uses, mainly used as a culinary herb flavoring agent. I've never used it that way. But what it does do, you can just roll it up really tight like this. This is just pure mugwort plant, just rolled with my hands. You can see I burnt this in. I'm going to show you how easily this lights. Well, you can see how easy it lights up. And that smell, I really like, can be used like an incense to help to clear negative energies, if you're into that. So there's a history of usage with this plant. They even used mugwort to transfer fire from one location to another because the smolder is so slow and long that you could actually carry something like this with you for quite the distance and transfer your fire as needed. Anyway, it's an interesting plant. There's a lot of information online about it. And I think it makes a great addition to a food forest. So I'm just gonna prune this back. I'm just checking the plant really, bringing it back to its boundary. It's kind of overtaking. Wonderful chop and drop as well in your garden. Just allow this to mulch the surface of your beds. Come back in a couple days, collect some of these leaves. Make some incense. So with the food forest design, my friends, it's all about planting in density and then coming around after the fact and thinning it out and detailing it, shaping it to make it beautiful. Just like a haircut. You know, if you want longer hair, you got to go through some funky stages. But once it gets to a certain length, now your options increase for styling depending on how you want to cut it. Garden is the same way, but you need that density, you need that thickness. You really want to try to space it out in a way where you're allowing for some crowding of your plants and also take into account that some things won't make it all the way, they're going to fail. It could be a fruit tree, it could be Another perennial plant. All right, so I've just cleared that whole hedge, exposing some of the wall now of the kugel bed. We've got all these cuttings here that we can use to build up our beds if we want. All right, my friends, well, that's gonna wrap up this video. I'm gonna continue working out in the garden on this beautiful overcast day. I'm just gonna get this video up real quick and head back out here and get some things done. I hope you all are having a wonderful day and you're able to spend some time out in your garden. So with that, until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Take care. I'll be talking to you again soon.